Hey, this is Jersey. You're listening to the Garden State. You are listening to the Garden State, the only New Jersey podcast that gives you all the news you need to hear this week. My name is Josh Sobo. I'm Josh Chomick. And this week we're missing our very own Jimmy Parks. It's very empty inside in here right now. Yeah, I... I it doesn't feel the same without Jimmy Parks. It, it feels weird. It's just the two of us, man. I think the only time we ever did a pod ourselves was episode one and like a random one. That's it. We've always yeah. had Jimmy or like a special guest with us, but this week it's just me and you. I don't like it. I'll say that outright. I, I think that... Just the two of us. Yeah, I mean, I was going to play that song. It's a, it's a great song. <laughs> I already got it up in the background, brother. Do you? Yeah. Oh, it's a good song. Post-production. So, um, yeah, I was going to say it is... Very weird to not have Jimmy Parks with us. I got to take the notes this week. We're praying the camera's in focus. Yes. Like, the show could fall apart this week if we really don't try hard enough. Well, welcome back, everybody, to the Garden State Podcast. We are missing our producer, James Parker the third. Um, and But it's okay. We're back on the Garden State. We have a week full of news for you guys. So many news stories this week. It's nuts. It's It never stops, New Jersey. And uh, before we get into any news... Josh Chomick, what did you do this weekend, my friend? Well, before the weekend update, I just want to—I just want to let everyone know. Yeah, Jimmy Parks, hardworking, hardworking young man. Yes, he is. I feel like most people would just abandon their jobs, you know, five p.m. clock out and head to the podcast because the podcast is so much fun. But yep. Jimmy Parks loves his job so much. He does. He decided to bail on us. Yeah, which he's really sad about to just work tonight. So I just want to give it up to Jimmy Parks. And we are paying him so much money to be on this podcast. It's actually astonishing he's turning down tonight's check, which would be it's about unreal. 20 grand an episode, which is, I mean, I don't want to give that to the listeners, but it's a lot of money. Which leads me to my next point. Yes. What if Jimmy is actually not working right now? Oh. And he's shopping around. What is it? What do you, what do you mean? You know, you know what I mean? Shopping around. Oh, no. Like, what if he's looking for a better New Jersey podcast? Oh, no. It's like when, when somebody leaves their job, Josh, they don't yeah. tell their boss that they're going to another job interview. They tell their boss, oh, I'm taking the day off, or I need a personal day. What if Jimmy's shopping around? Is it possible there's a better New Jersey podcast than us? Gabago. I don't think so. I think that we kind of hit all the major notes of Jersey. L- listen, man, I'm, I, we're pretty humble dudes. <laughs> but I just want to say, like, I think we might have one of the most premier Jersey podcasts out there right now. Oh, I hope so. Like the, ratings are sh- the ratings are great. The ratings. I think are we're five star on Spotify, so it's great. Well, it could be possible, you know, uh, or it I could just hope be, Jimmy. Jimmy, if you're listening to this, don't leave us. Jimmy does seem to like Philly a lot. It could be a PA podcast oh. he's working on. He does know more about Pennsylvania than Jersey sometimes. The Coal State. The Coal State. Yeah, that's. I don't like that at all. I would be really sad if Jimmy left. Yeah. I, I hope the viewers are still listening. I feel like Jimmy's a fan favorite. Why would they name it after? I understand why it's the Coal State, but I mean, like. Think of the children, man. Santa Claus brings you coal when you're on the naughty list. I wouldn't want to live in the cold state if I was a kid. Yeah, me neither. So I don't know. I think your theory may have some merit to it. We'll have to investigate next time we see Jimmy. I say we just like, we really just going on him next week. Yeah, I like that. We try to get the truth out. Yeah. I hope it's just like a theory. I hope he's actually working right now because Jimmy is a good guy. I I thought he was a good guy until now. We just, we won't Hmm. know. We won't know. know. We have to trust the kid. Hey, Josh, by the way, this weekend, because I asked you about your weekend review, we actually ran into each other this weekend. Uh, multiple times. Multiple? Mul- yeah, you forgot. What did I mean? On Saturday, we hung out twice, both with June, your daughter. Twice? Oh, that's right. We you're did right, a you're lot. Right. Okay, Saturday morning, we were invited to Bavella's and Mountainside and for some breakfast. And, it was amazing. Uh, I said, you know what? If I'm doing breakfast on a Saturday, I got to bring June and Shell. And it was great. It was was it co- her first time going out? Like to a restaurant. First time going to a restaurant for sure. We, you know, I think it's still a little early to be bringing her places, but we were like, ah, whatever. Dude, she slept the entire time. Like yeah, she, she wasn't was loud good. at all. She was pretty good. And the food at Bavella was great. Great spot in Mountainside. If you want to get some breakfast this weekend, go watch our review. Yeah, check out our review. Um, but also, you're right. We did see each other at Bavella's. And then I ordered uh, DoorDash to go because I knew you guys were going to be eating dinner at a local spot. Yeah. And we came by Barbacoa. Barbacoa is a great spot in Summit. Great burritos. Yeah, I got a burrito. It was so good. And then, yeah, you ended up eating your food at Barbacoa. I stopped by to get it to go, and she was asleep. And we were like, all right, let's just sit for five minutes and say hi to everybody. Because it felt good to see humans. And uh, so we ate, and you know, we stayed for like 45 minutes. It was a nice little visit. It was a great time. 
Yeah, it was very nice. And then we went home. So it's been, uh, it was good to see both you and Jimmy Parks not recording a podcast. And that was Saturday night and Jimmy was not in Philly. Wow. What, right? <laughs> Crazy. Ultra rare Jimmy Vision. Ultra rare. The one, on one Saturday a month, he's not in Philly. So it's, well, it's yeah. great that we kept him in Jersey and we're, we're working on that with Jimmy. But you know, who knows? Right now he could be in Philly. He could have lied oh, to us. Oh, good, Josh. Don't even say that. I don't want to feel this way. I want to feel good today about the podcast. Yeah. Positive thinking only. Yeah. Jimmy's at work right now, really hauling. So I feel like there's something Jersey related, unrelated to our news stories that I wanted to bring up in tonight's podcast. Something that we all talked about. I don't know what it is. Oh, I thought it was really funny. So for those that follow us on Instagram, we shared some footage of a wildfire happening uh, in New Jersey right now. And it was amazing to see comments of people being like, this is happening now. I live in this. Where was it? What town was it? in? Manchester. They're like, I live in Manchester Township. When was this? And we're like, literally right now. Yeah, look out your window, smell the smoke, see the smoke. It's everywhere. But it seems that wildfire has been tamed. It's under control. Yeah, I think it's like, it's still ongoing right now, but it's pretty much done. There's another one in West Milford ongoing at the moment. It's like wow. a 400 acre fire. Crazy. Wow. But yeah, like the top comments on our TikTok was like over 8,000 likes being like, I'm, I'm just finding out about this now. All the comments were just like, um, I've ne- I haven't heard about this until I saw this TikTok. So Josh, we're breaking news. We are absolutely breaking news. Even and to all the, like, everyone who lives down there near the fire, it's crazy how like people are like, I live 20 minutes from here. Like I have not heard about this, which is like kind of crazy to me. Hmm. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. Well, so, so I, people I, were saying it was like the military doing it. Yeah, there's conspiracies that are so dumb. So many just dumb comments. It was incredible. It's just wildfire season, isn't it? Yeah, and if you like this week is just prime for fires to start popping up everywhere. Like you see on the parkway, even near us, like every it's like it's like don't throw out your cigarettes, use um use an ashtray. There's a bunch yeah. of signs like that near us because it's so prime. So like, there's hmm. fires all throughout the state. So it's insane. And it's like 88 degrees today. It's, it's very hot. It's like a summer day. My living room is so hot. I didn't even put the AC unit back in. I did that yesterday. It is, oh, it is nice. a little toasty in here. We might get a little sauna session. <laughs> we probably are. But get a little tan. Let's open up the windows. So yeah, to a, a warning to our listeners before we get into all the news and stuff. If you are on the Garden State Parkway and say you're, I don't know, you got some fire in some form on you, <laughs> something flammable, do not throw it out the window. Wildfires are popping up and uh, we don't want any Smokey more. the Bear is going to get really upset if you do. Yeah, absolutely. So hey, quick qu- question for you, Cho. Last week we heard from, uh, we saw we, we got a package and we thought it was from... <laughs> A listener. Uh, yes. And we opened it live on the podcast and it turned out to just literally be someone returning merch to us. It, uh, very embarrassing on my end. But this week, before we get into the mailbag, which by the way, Chomik, there is a number for that mailbag, right? I think so. 908-67-99993. If you want to call into that number and leave us a voicemail, we love to get uh, all sorts of questions and comments from you. If you have a question about something happening in New Jersey or maybe a tidbit on some local juicy juice news, juicy fruit, 100% juice for hundred percent kids. Not uh, very accurate, but yeah. Yeah. If you want to leave us a voicemail, that's the number. But before we do that, we have some physical in the flesh mailbag mail. Well, do you remember the mailbag a few weeks ago? Our dude from the military in Japan. Yes. He was like, I'm going to send you guys something. Yes. Like, it was like, it took like three weeks, but it finally arrived in their PO box yesterday. Get it up here. Let's and see what it is. We haven't opened any of this, so I don't know what he sent us. Let's check it out. If you're, if you're listening to this right now, I just want to let you guys know, we also put these on YouTube so you could watch what we're doing. Oh, quick shout out to our YouTube channel. Look at this well, box. He spent 1450 on shipping. Yeah. And it's kind of heavy. And remind me his name. Um, Dom- Dominic. Dom. That's right. Dominic. Thank you, Dominic. Oh, boy. ASM- ASMR. Ooh, I like that. Now I'm going wow. to open the box. Okay, there's so many things in this box. Oh, oh my goodness. Crack that open. Okay, we could we could share. We can look okay. through this, but that's could, a magnet. We got oh, these are magnets. From Okinawa. He sent us some magnets. Beautiful. Oh, he's from Okinawa. This is sweet, man. Little <gasps> Yo, we guessed it. Remember, we we're like, he's gonna send us candies. This is a wow. box full of Japanese candies. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, oh I want some high shoes. Open those up. Dude. Wait a second. What are these? High shoes. Wait, these we should do so a we legit. should do a Japanese candy review right now on Let's dump it out. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Dump this whole box out. Dominic, thank you so much for sending us this candy. Wait, peach Kit Kats. Pocky. Can we, can we try this first? Yeah, sure. Open up. You okay, called it. You're like, "Is he going to send us Pocky? He sent us some Pocky, baby. Let's go." So, 
Well, let's uh, let's do a live New Jersey review of some Japanese candy. We're gonna start with peach Kit Kats. Ooh, here's one for you and one for me. Hmm, <laughs> dude. Like, I prefer the originals better, but like, it's still it's interesting because it's not what you it's not what you expect when you bite into a Kit. No, this is incredible. Very sweet. Wow. <laughs> peach is my favorite um, candy flavor. Mm. Mixed with that, like, chocolate on the inside. Holy smokes, mm. that's really good. Okay, let's try one more before we move on. Yeah, there's, there's honestly, there's just, um, there's a whole table full of Japanese candies right now. Pick one, and we'll try it. Okay, hold on. We can't go through all of them. I wish we could. Oh, can you, do you have the Google Translate app? You could put your camera on it and see what it actually says. You're kidding me. Yeah. Really? Open, go, Download Google Translate. Got it. Yeah, open up the next if one. If you guys want to mail us anything to, the, to our P.O. box, we don't normally do these live openings, but... Um, our P.O. Box is P.O. Box. I got to 1613. 1613 Cranford, New Jersey. 07016. 07016. You can mail us anything. We'll open it. <laughs> you don't have to send us anything. I think it's just hilarious that people send us stuff. It's pretty I, cool. It's creative. All it translated was chocolate snack high. Ooh, let's try it. <laughs> I don't, dude, that's all it gives me. Not much context right there. This, this is, is really dangerous. Dominic, thank you so much for sending all this candy from Japan. We salute you. Thank you so much for your service, brother. This, is, this is making my okay. life right so now. So what this is, it's like a little pretzel stick with a, a chocolate mushroom on the top. Yeah, it's a mushroom. It's a little chocolate mushroom. Whoa. Oh, that's good, bro. That's really good. Mmm. Bro, I love Japanese candy. They're so freaking good. Wow. <laughs> this is dangerous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I got to take these away from us right now, or else we're going to eat yeah. these into our podcast. Yeah. All right. If you guys want to send us anything, shoot, shoot us something at the P.O. Box. It's hilarious. What was it? 16 what? 1613, uh, Cranford, New Jersey, 07016. Okay. Or you can call into the mailbag at 908 67 99 Let's open that one mailbag we got, John. Let's see what we got. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Raph from Carney. I just finished getting a root canal. Um, most people hate the dentist. I do, too. So I wanted to thank you guys for your podcast. It came out on the perfect time so that my Friday morning uh, root canal, I could put you guys Amazing. as loud as possible in my uh, in my AirPods so that I didn't hear all the drilling and all that that was uh, that was going on. So appreciate you guys. Also, here's a formal request to get Danny Dimes on the podcast more often. Thanks, guys. Wow. A Danny Dimes fan. Wow. Thank you, Raph from uh, Carney, for calling in. Um, you know, you should brush your teeth some more, man. If is you that brush rude? your teeth, you don't have to get a root canal. Is that rude to say? No, it makes sense. Like, I haven't had to get a root canal yet because I do have a lot of cavities. I guess, is, are, do cavities lead to root canals eventually? Yes. So, you know what's um, kind of ironic is as he was saying that, I tried another one of these Japanese candies and it had hard rocks in the middle and it really hurt my teeth when I bit on it. You know, if you eat all these candies, Josh, it's not going to end well for you and your teeth. Yeah, I think you're right. Do but you have any cavities at the moment? Maybe one. I think I, all of them fell out. When I was a kid, I used to get them all the time. But, but you got not. them filled. Yeah, but then they fall out and you get adult teeth and my adult teeth are pretty solid. Bro, wait, after your teeth fall out? What do you mean? So you're saying you had cavities with your with your kid teeth. Mm-hmm. And then those teeth fell out, like mm-hmm. all kids lose their teeth. Mm-hmm. And with your adult teeth, you never had a cavity? I don't think so. Are you serious? That's really that's a good track record, dude. I brush twice a day. I, flo- the, what, I floss every like month or two. When's the last time you went to a dentist? <laughs> Four months ago. Oh, that's great. So you do get checked. Oh, did I ever tell you my dentist story? Which one? I think I told it on the pod. Oh, my, when, yeah, when my they, you got recognized. The, yeah. My hygienist knew about the podcast. Weird. But yeah, shout out to Raph. Dude, uh, imagine getting a root canal listening to us talking. I guess our voices are that soothing. I was going to say, that might make it worse. Right? I wouldn't listen to myself. I feel like it would stress me out. But Well, that's a pretty cool, that's a pretty cool listening experience. That's the first I've heard. People listening to us while at the dentist. When I was a kid, my dentist had a little portable DVD player, which by the way, remember portable DVD players? Shout out to those things. Little like tiny looking laptops with a DVD slot. Absolutely electric. And they would put on like kids movies because I was a kid and I, it was never enjoyable because you're, they're like drilling your teeth and stuff. So now I feel like a podcast might be the happy medium. Yeah. It's a little rude though. I feel like. Well, not for, well, you're talking about a child. I don't think a child would want to listen to our podcast. Like we're yeah. talking about grown adults here. Um, I like watching the Food Network when I'm. I like my dentist. They have the TV right in front of me, mm-hmm. and they give me the remote. Uh, Do they give you the remote? No, they they uh, don't have a TV in the room. Oh, you, dude, you gotta go to a better dentist. I, guess. I have a big screen right in front of me, and they give me the remote. They're like, you could watch whatever you want, put the Food Network on, fall right to sleep, 
hours you done. Fall asleep. I, at the I, dentist? I I close my eyes and I really doze off. Wow, right? that's really impressive. Yeah, dude, you, it's, you're very. I relaxed. love the dentist. I love that place. They're good people. All right, let's get into the news for the week. And uh, we got a good lineup here. It's pretty stacked. Our first story of the evening, if you're listening at night. I want someone to call in while we're doing the podcast, by the way. But Most people listen to the morning, Josh. We release our podcast every Friday at 5 in the morning. And guess what? By 4 in the afternoon, we already have like more than half of people listening, which hmm. is cool. So, A New Jersey teacher has been accused of grabbing a child with autism and holding him upside down by his ankles. You know, we need some context here because you immediately read a headline like that and you just start fuming. Like, yeah, it's pretty. What we need some context. Like, what actually went down? So it says a New Jersey teacher was reportedly suspended last week, accused of holding a four-year-old boy upside down by his ankles and leaving him with cuts and bruises across his body. Davina Wilkins has since pulled her son Daylin, who has autism, from the South Orange Maplewood school system amid a fallout of the March 27th in- incident at Montrose Pre-K School. He was held upside down by his ankles by a teacher, Wilkins said. The school's principal called his mother following the incident to say her son had bit one of the teachers, landing the boy in timeout. Uh, When that was over, Wilkins said his teacher went back over to him and kicked his legs up towards her. And that's when she had the chance to grab him by both his ankles to hold him up in the air. And apparently he was up in the air for 15 seconds when an aide came over and said, I'll take it from here. So 15 seconds up in the air like that. Yeah. It's, I don't think you should ever, like, what are you doing? Just trying to teach the kid a lesson by holding him upside down. What? Yeah. I, I don't want to misspeak on this one. Um, but I think, cause obviously if someone held my kid upside down, now that I have a kid, I think I'd hold them upside down. I would, I go punisher mode and do some terrible things. But, um, I think there's a challenge to teaching, you know, kids with special needs and if he bit somebody, I'd imagine this was a pretty dramatic scene where they were trying to figure out how do we handle it. I don't think holding the kid upside down like a fish, you know, when you catch no a fish. No shot, yeah. There has to be another route. Like, that's just completely unacceptable. Yeah. I don't know, though. I, I, again, it's a situation where I'd like to hear more of the news come out about it to see what happened. But if this is exactly what happened when the kid bit somebody and then they were like, hey, and they held him like this, then that's probably pretty inappropriate. And I don't know. Yeah, there's no solution. <laughs> You're talking about a little kid, too. He's four. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty messed that, up. Yeah, you can't just hold a kid upside down like that. And that's just absolutely insane. That that really angers me hearing this. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty messed up. It, but, you know, I will say we talked a while back about the rooms in the corner of special needs classrooms. They're kind of like, like, kind of like little... How, how we like con- solitary confinement rooms? It's pretty much that. Yeah, there's no windows. There's nothing. Just well, like I think there is a walls. window for the door, but basically, it's for special needs students that lash out. They put them in there until they can get them under control. And we said we thought it was crazy. And then I had a special needs teacher reach out to us, and then a friend um, who has a sibling with special needs, and they were like, "Yeah, there's some students that when they lash out, they can't be controlled, and they get very dangerous. And it's the only way to keep." safety in the classroom. And I was like, Oh, well, when you say it like that, I guess I understand because especially if it's a, like a 16 year old, let's say who yeah. weighs 200 pounds, like how are you going to, you can't stop, you that. can't stop yeah. them. You got to put, put them in the room. And, but this is a four year old, you know, and I'd imagine there's yet a four year old, there's ways to control them. I could just see like the teacher probably lost their temper because the, the kid was biting people and the teacher just snapped probably held the kid up. It was trying to, just trying to figure out a way to calm the situation. And it was completely wrong on the teacher's end. Yeah. So I understand the backlash and I'm outraged hearing that. Like if I had a kid and a teacher did that, man, it'd be game over. Hmm. Um, if you, yeah, if you found out your kid bit a teacher and then the teacher in retaliation to try to keep the kid from biting them more, grabbing them by their feet, would you be as furious? Do you think? I think I would. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's not like, I agree. The, I don't disagree. I'm just trying to think it through. Like, I don't know. It's easy to Monday morning quarterback. Is the teacher still there? Like, did did the teacher have to like step down <laughs> for a bit? So photos show the bruises Wilkins says her son suffered following the classroom incident. Dalen was taken out of school after that. Dalen will not be returning to Montrose. Um, I hope that at least the district will be able to provide homeschooling because I don't trust anyone with my son at this time, his mother said. The school district says it is cooperating with the appropriate authorities but can't comment further due to the confidentiality rules. 
Uh, the Wilkins family says it has been told by the principal that the teacher in question has been suspended. There we go. But the child uh, in protective services is telling them that the teacher has been fired. So I don't know. So which rumor you, is that the teacher is gone. Teacher is gone. But well, that's the thing. I, I, if you do that to a kid, bro, you can't. There's got to be a con- like. There's got to be consequences. Absolutely. You can't hold a kid up for 15 seconds like that. It just sounded like the teacher lost their temper. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And that's just my assumption. That's my assumption. I agree. I totally agree. I, I'm not trying to sound like I, I'm, I'm not even playing devil's advocate. I'm just thinking about it. Like if a kid bit me and was, it was like being very aggressive, like biting. Cause when you bite, like, what do you do? Hold their head back. I don't know. Like the kid's autistic too. So yeah. going into this, I feel I'm not like saying you need this is to... the right response, by the way. I'm not saying, hold yeah, it. you're good. You're but good. Like, how do you control a little, a little tyke when they're biting it, they take a bite out of your arm. Like at that point, do you, I think that at that point, you, you know, you can contact the principal or someone further and be like, we have to get the parent in here now. Yeah. But what if they're running up to you and biting you and biting you? Like, can you grab them and hold them down there's on probably, their back? There's probably, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but like, there's probably a, like you could probably grab them. I think just flipping a kid upside down is com- it just doesn't make sense. You know, like what if you just like put them in a bear wrap or something? Just yeah, but what if them? they then, do you have them in a bear wrap and they lean down yeah, and bite you? Exactly. I don't, I don't know. I've never been in a classroom like I'm not, that before. I don't know what, I would love to know if you're a special ed teacher and you have training in this sort of thing, would love to hear what's the proper procedure when a kid does this sort of thing. I mean, if even, I know a four year old, they weigh like what, 30 pounds, like <laughs> they're pretty easy to control, but I just wonder like, what is the procedure? Are you allowed to hold them on the ground? Are you supposed to try to barricade them somehow? Like, am I missing something? Like, is there something no, else you I, could do? I, I can't really think of any other solution right there. Like hold their hands and and try to keep them away from your. I don't know. I don't know. You guys listening to this? What do you guys think? What do you think of the whole entire story? And what is the solution in a in a, a case like this? Because it's very it's very tricky. Well, holding them upside down is not the solution. No, <laughs> that's for sure. And and we'll see. Absolutely what not. I doubt that teacher gets their job back. I don't think that was the right way to handle it. Um, but this is why. Hopefully, there were some cameras in that classroom, right? Yeah, let's hope so. All right, moving on. Rutgers University is currently on strike for the fourth day in a row. This is the first strike in its 257-year history as a university. The teachers want to get paid. Trying to get paid more. Trying to get that raise. Trying to make that living. Graduate students, bro. Yeah. They're trying to make a living, too. I think they don't get paid that much either. So Hmm. So it's a crazy situation over at Rutgers right now. So students at Rutgers University are getting an unscheduled lesson Monday morning in labor relations as their professors went on strike for the first time in the school's 257-year history. I just, I just want to say that that's great writing. Continue. You thought it was good writing? I, I like how they said they got an unscheduled lesson Monday morning oh. because you know, there's a strike, labor relations. Pretty cool. Got it. Rutgers University Camden is one of three campuses where students and staff members will join the picket line Monday morning. Rutgers Newark and New Brunswick campuses are also striking. Um, three different unions are uniting to go on strike Monday morning they represent about 9,000 Rutgers staff members, including full-time faculty, graduate workers, and part-time lecturers. Union represent- representatives say they're demanding salary increases, better job security, and adjunct uh, for adjunct f- uh, faculty, and guaranteed funding for grad students, among other requests. Negotiations between the union and Rutgers have been ongoing for nearly a year, but the two sides have yet to reach a deal. So... Rutgers president claims the two sides have made significant progress in the recent weeks, but union representatives dispute that. So it sounds like it's a little bit up in the air. Uh, Phil I'll, Murphy had something I'll, to say about I this. I love how Murphy just like, because Murphy's a part of this whole entire thing, but like he was, it sounds like he's just fed up and he sounds like that one principal at a school. You could read the line, but it sounds like straight out of a principal's mouth. It says New Jersey governor, Phil Murphy said his strategy for bringing people together. I'm sorry for bringing together representatives from both sides of the strike is simple. Everybody is going to get into a room. We'll do a version of locking the door and throwing the key away until we come up with a solution here. So <laughs> it sounds like he's fed up. He's like, guys, come on, let's just reach an agreement. Let's get this over with. I think we have uh, bigger fish to fry. I think the main takeaway here is your tuition is about to go up. <laughs> Rocker students. I know. And that's the, that's what I think Murphy's fighting against, right? Like he's just like, we want you, we want these teachers to get paid more, but not at the cost of tuition. I don't know. Cause the state funds a large chunk of Rutgers. I think it was 50%. We looked up in the past of Rutgers funding comes from the state. So it might, might be rolled into the taxpayers. Well, uh, you paying more tax to support <laughs> what Rutgers. Are, there's assistant coaches that get paid over a million dollars. 
a year. Really? Which is a problem then. So you see these certain coaches are getting paid all this money. Yeah. Um, for what, you know? So I'm not, that's I'm, another <sighs> argument. Yeah, but I'm not like the big college football guy. I'm not the guy that's going to sit there Saturday all, st- all day and watch college football. But I will say Rutgers football probably brings a lot of money into the university. 100%, yeah. So I don't know if what the, co- the comparison is there. Like, is it bringing a- enough money in? That it makes sense, probably not. Well, d- you know, if we're honest, but. Oh, maybe if Rutgers just got good, I'm totally joking. I have no. It, Rutgers is pretty decent, right? I wonder if they've ever thought of that. Just getting better, get better, just get better, <laughs> Rutgers. Just win every single championship, and maybe we'll make some more money here. Maybe they should just put it on the football team, guys. Step it up, be better, so that everyone can make more money. Well, here's one one thing I think is that's happening is people all around our state are feeling the weight of the rising cost to live in the state of New Jersey. And you're seeing it from professors at Rutgers University too. I don't know. I think I think this is being felt by all of us in some small way. Uh, Post COVID, it is it is very expensive to live in New Jersey. Well, what's the average? I'm about to look it up because I don't know if you know this. What is the average salary a graduate student makes? I guess in universities across the country, well, grad student is different than a professor. Well, that well, they're also fighting for grad students to get paid more. Yeah, but isn't grad student a short period of your life before you go make a lot of money? It's it's a few years of work, but like think about rent in the state right now. How much you have to pay for rent, and they're getting paid like thirty two thousand at Rutgers right now. Grad students. Yeah, but are they provided housing? No, they have to rent. You're sure about that? I, one article I read, they said they have to pay for rent. Oh, interesting. So maybe maybe some are provided, others aren't. Um, but that's what I read. Average NJ professor salary. This is going to be a bad number because it's such a wide. I'm sure some make. Yeah, so 78K to 240K. It's such a wide range, yeah. So I'm guessing 240 is like your tenured at Princeton, <laughs> Princeton yeah. School of Business or something. Yeah, most of your professors at Rutgers are not making anywhere near that. Uh, who knows? You, you don't know that. I mean, let's see. Well, I don't know. That, I, I'm, they're, they're striking for a purpose, so I would assume they just want to get paid more because it's so expensive to live in the state. Oh, this is interesting. Rutgers University highest paid employees. This is open payroll. Um, What's number one? All the coaches, bro. That's what I'm saying. One coach made four million in a year. Another coach, three million in a year. Yo, oh, okay, so, this is crazy. So, a professor of Professor Clin Chair. I don't know what that would mean. A Clin Chair, something, some sort of role. Made two point two million. Prof to Chair makes one million. Associate Professor. So these are all like um, some sort of chief professor roles. But I want to say like a regular like. But like even like what we were saying about earlier, three coaches up there on that list, you're equaling like nine million total for like three I didn't, people. I didn't know assistant coaches make so much money. Must be nice. It's really crazy. Holy cow! I know it's a lot of money. Okay, hold on. Rutgers professors top one million at, as university salaries booms. This is 2014. So obviously this isn't everybody, but there was one. Okay, so 13 doctors rose to the top of the list with each earning more than $1 million. Wow. That's a uh, neurological surgery professor. So yeah, it's a wide range. I'm sure there's someone making, you know, 75 grand like a year. What's your and average like, like algebra teacher, you know, algebra one professor maybe, making at Rutgers. If they've been, te- if they're tenured and everything. I'm talking about maybe like, nah, let's say you've been there. Like you've been there a, a year. Years, yeah. Uh, maybe like 75 grand a year. Yeah. But that's and starting out like anywhere though, you know? I don't, I'm totally making that up by the way. <laughs> I mean, people listening might be professors and like these guys are out of their minds. But I feel like once you're tenured and you're in it, you got to be making like 130 at least, right? I think so. If you're like, if you've been there for 15 years, and it's a big school, so yeah, I would assume. Ah, uh, it's interesting. We're really just talking. <laughs> We're just totally <laughs> We're just, making it just up. Just ranting right now, but uh, we could be totally wrong. But it's interesting. Yeah, let's pr- let's um, ensure everything we just said by saying we don't know what we're talking about. On to our next story. Um, there, this is a pretty bizarre one. Uh, This week, a homeless woman came to New Jersey with 70 dead dogs and cats in her pickup truck. Oh, yeah. So we've done stories like this before. And I just don't know why some of these women, bro, are just piling up all these dogs and cats. Do you think this is specifically a women thing? I didn't say that. I just said every story we did happened to be a woman. Don't Don't wrap this around me like that, Josh. Bro, you're, there's going to be some feminists yeah, that are canceled. really annoyed. You're I'm, going to jail for I'm that one. I'm just saying, every story we've done was a woman. I didn't mean it like that. Well, it is like a cliche, like the cat lady, right? Like it's Ex- like yeah. you never hear about a guy that has 60 cats but, in his house. Okay, nonetheless, a guy or a girl. Why are these people 
piling up. Why do you have 70 dogs? Okay, and so why do you have 70 cats? It doesn't make any sense. Let's review our story list of these types of stories. There was a woman who had 100 cats that blew her house up. There was another two ladies that had 100 dead dogs in their house. Yeah. And then was there one other story? I think a, that, uh, there was another one like that. I don't remember. So um, a Virginia woman whose pickup truck was found abandoned outside a New Jersey mall with over 70 dead and starving cats and dogs said she lost her home to a fire. The Ramapo Bergen Animal Refuge took in some 40 surviving dogs and cats and processed the remains of the 30 others. So the headline was completely wrong. There's 70 in total, 40 are alive, 30 are dead, um, and they're being taken to an animal sh- a shelter now. The organization said the truck had been parked behind the Sussex County Shopping Center since Thursday. Dogs running around the parking lot and a strong odor drew attention to the Chevrolet Silverado on Monday. State police, um, which provides police service to Hampton and rescue organizers spent several hours removing the scared flea bitten urine soaked and feces caked animals from the truck. Dang. It was painful to see the fear in the faces of these innocent animals. The animal rescue organization said in a written statement. The dogs in the cab were not in cages, and while the truck bed held three cages of dogs, the remains of the dead animals were in garbage bags. you got to be kidding me. What? The owner of the truck, Lynn Leonard, 53, of Bloxham, Virginia, told shelter workers and volunteers she had put all the animals into the truck after a fire destroyed her home. Leonard was arrested on animal cruelty charges and released pending a court date. Crazy. Yeah, like even if there wasn't a fire, why do you have that many animals? Um, it just hmm. doesn't sound possible to take care of that many animals in your home unless you are in an actual shelter. But that's insane. How wh- wh- What makes you think hmm. to put 70 dogs and cats together in a pickup truck, dude? Inside the, inside the truck. We're not yeah. talking like outside the bed, inside the actual truck, just piled on each other. What the heck is wrong with you? Josh, can you please explain to me how does someone do that? I think it's, <laughs> it's just, just crazy. I bro. think it's just mental illness, man. I think there's a lot of people in our culture that have severe mental illnesses, um, and and they what they just take it on animals. That's insane. I mean, perhaps it's like uh, you know, like the same thing as a hoarder. Like, how do you become a hoarder? A lot of the hoarders, if you ever watch Hoarders Buried Alive, um, which <laughs> it's amazing that's a TV show. Um, a lot of people have, you know, childhood trauma where maybe, you know, maybe she had a dog that her parents gave away when it was a year old cause they were just cruel. And now she like, <laughs> well, let me get 70 dogs to make myself feel better. I don't know. People have, people have <laughs> That's issues, you know, messed up. It's That's har- so wrong. It's hard to understand why anyone does anything they do. And I'm not saying that this is okay. She's going to go to jail or a mental hospital, depending on how they evaluate yeah, Hopefully her. she gets help if she is struggling with something like that. Like she did just lose her home. So she's probably like, I don't know if that's really true or not though. They, that was the story that her home burned down, but and maybe it did, but it just is very strange. And I think there's, I don't think any sane person has 70 animals in a pickup truck. No shot. So clearly we could deduce that there's something going on here. Also, why did she come to Jersey from Virginia? I mean, would you want to be in Virginia? I well, Virginia is nice. In yeah, parts. it is nice. I'm sorry, I shouldn't. Have, I shouldn't have taken that dig at Virginia. I forgive you, but um, that's kind of a <laughs> sus, just a route, you know, driving all the way from Virginia to New Jersey. I don't know. Maybe she had family here. It doesn't say anything like that in the article, but she could have had family here. But even the photo, go up to that top photo, Josh. It's kind of crazy. It's, oh my goodness! Yeah, that is. Uh, you can't just pile animals like that, dude. Poor dogs. You. That is insane. So hopefully, hopefully the dogs that survive, they get uh, the proper treatment and they get to go to a safe home this time so they can live their, uh, their lives. Their properly. best lives. Yep. Their best lives yet, dude. The best is yet to come. That's right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right, moving on. A closed Atlantic City airport is set to be developed into a Formula One racetrack, housing, and other retail spaces. The Atlantic City boom, dude. Yeah, what's going it's, on it's, in this Every week we're hearing about new developments, things going up. It's crazy, bro. I got to say, this is... Is the city really transforming? I don't know, but this sounds like if when I was nine, you said to me, hey, we want you to d- design a new part of Atlantic City. I'd be like, okay, great. Over here is going to be the Formula One racetrack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we'll do some shopping and some apartments. Like, this is so random, a Formula One racetrack. I don't know much about F1, but do we have uh, F1 tracks around the state already? 
I know we have racetracks, but I don't know if it's F1 specific. I don't know, but I honestly think this is a good idea. I think it's cool. Because if you think about it, Formula One is on the come up right now. It really is. Everybody's getting into Formula One. Everyone goes to Austin for these events. And let's be honest, there's a lot of bad transit in New Jersey as it is, right? Yes. A lot of terrible ways to get around. Yes. And to have a Formula One car sounds kind of nice. Oh, so you're saying let's open this up to the public. I'm saying forget the track. Let's just get these cars out on the road. Sure, dude. (laughs) You should write a letter to Murphy. See what he says to you. I don't think he's going to get back to me on that one, but it says here, it says here a 2.7 billion development Billion that, with a that, B. That's a B. Development proposal to transform a former Atlantic City airport into a Formula One racetrack with condominiums and retail businesses was given a green light. I love the green light. Wednesday night by the city council. That, that means it's happening. I want to put $2.7 in perspective for a second. Okay, please. Yeah, I, I just want to figure that what out. What was the cost of Newark Airport's Terminal A? Wasn't it like 800 it, mil? No, I thought, we I thought it was $2.7 billion. Was it 2.7? 2.7 billion. The Sheesh. exact. So instead of building a terminal, they could have put a Formula One racetrack in, in New York. That would have been so much cooler. Wow. So the council voted eight to one with one member abstaining to move forward with a memorandum uh, of understanding with DEEM Enterprises LLC's Bader Field proposal. So that's a lot of word vomit. But basically, the project would include a 2.44 mile Formula One specification only motor course surrounded by hundreds of condominiums and retail commercial establishments. You gotta love it. <laughs> More condominiums and retail locations. Yeah, but I mean, this this could be a good way to bring some life to AC. Where, you know, I think it might be a good time, personal opinion, uh, if you want to make a lot of money in 20 years, go buy some property in AC. Hey, especially if they're making it the new Venice. They're making the Venice of New Jersey. <laughs> so construction would take place over six to nine years and create 1,200 to 1,500 permanent jobs, uh, Binder said. So the more than 140-acre Bader Field was among the nation's first airports, officials said. Uh, it opened in 1910 and was the first municipal airport in the nation. Nice. The nation. So the city owns this space that's being built on, um, and it's been closed since 2006. So a city spokesperson did not immediately provide additional comments on the project, but Mayor Marty Small. It's Marty again. It's our boy. Shout out to Marty Small. That's such a great name. I love Marty. I don't even know the guy, but I love him. Can we look him up real quick? He he might be. I don't know. What if he's the worst? I shouldn't have said I loved him. I just think that's a cool name. Honestly, Marty Marty Small. There he is. Marty. Oh, here he is in the club. Dude. Marty, you got to work on the image. Dude, I like that button up, though. Whoa. Dude, he's got some steez. He's wearing an Eagles blazer to a courtroom. Zam. Wow, it's Marty. Crazy. Good stuff. Wild. Marty. Good okay. guy. Call him so, to the pod, Marty. He's holding a press conference Thursday to ceremonially sign the agreement. So what do you guys think about this? Do you think it's a good idea to bring a Formula One racetrack to Atlantic City? You think it's promising? Like, Do we have F1 tracks right now in Jersey, Josh? Let's look it up really quick because I, I don't want to speak out of terms. Formula One tracks and Jay, uh, the Port Imperial Street Circuit. This is <laughs> in Weehawken. That's F one though. Formula One, yeah, World Championship in Weehawken. Sick. So I guess that's like a whole world, bro. I don't know anything about. Like all my friends watch these F one shows. Like, do you watch any of those? No, I never have. I should start. It's. It looks like it's gonna be. It was. This one was just on the street yeah. though. So. Hey, could be big for Formula One, could be big for Jersey. We'll have to see. Shout out to Marty Small. Yeah, go check out. Uh, well, you're going to have to wait like nine years for this. So don't relax. If this is getting you really excited, it's not going to be done anytime soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nine years is a long time. So we'll see. Long we'll time. see what happens down the road if this actually uh, comes together or not for AC, yep. the Venice of New Jersey. This next story is a little bit darker than racetracks and condominiums. So just prepare yourself for this. An 11-year-old Pennsylvania boy was found dead in his bed this week. Police then discovered his mother's car 120 miles away submerged in the sand of a Cape May beach. Did, that's the weirdest part. How? What did she try doing? Driving into the ocean? That's what it, the car looks like. It was trying to drive into the ocean. So maybe she was trying to end her life or I, I don't know. Very, very dark situation all around from the kid's death to like this woman trying to drive her car into the ocean. Like why yeah. was it submerged? Like, that's weird, dude. A dad made a tragic discovery when he came home to find his 11-year-old son dead in his bed Tuesday morning, according to the Montgomery County District Attorney's Office. Police were called to the house 
on the 500 block of Privet Road in Horsham Township, where they found the boy in the master bedroom. The boy's dad told police the 11-year-old had slept in bed with his mother the night prior. Tuesday morning, he noticed the bedroom door was locked and his wife's car was missing from their garage. Oh, no. Her car was found partially submerged in the ocean near Beach Avenue in Cape May while police were still at the family's home. The boy's mother was then found by Wildwood Crest Police a short time later. In condition, uh, her condition is not clear at this time. My God! So, a family member of the boy's mother told Fox Twenty Nine in a written statement that she is nurturing and loving, and loved all children in the family, including her nieces and nephews. No charges have been announced, and the boy's cause of death is pending an autopsy. That's so. I mean, sad. we can't. It's yeah, you can't we can't come to any conclusions yet because we don't have the information, but things that are given to us, right, Josh, number one, uh, the boy's room was locked when mm. the dad woke up in the morning. Um, well, the master bedroom. So the dad, the, yeah. it sounds like the dad came home. Maybe he wasn't home yeah. with the family. Mm -hmm. Um, but the boy slept in, he slept in the master bedroom with his mom, but then she drove into the ocean and came me 120 yeah. miles away. It just, that just sounds like a, uh, you know, like a mental break sort of situation. Yeah, and there's a photo of the car and it's at yeah. it's at the beach, uh, just like literally like halfway into the ground submerged, which is very odd. Mm -hmm. So it looks like maybe she just tried killing herself. Uh, like why else would she be on the beach? And then she ran after her car got stuck. So they found yeah. her in Wildwood. So it's a terrible situation. I have no idea. You know, we, I, no, no, no one does and we won't know until they do an investigation, but... Sounds like she snapped, and then the poor father, man. Just oh my goodness! You have an eleven-year-old who just died. I can't imagine <sighs> what that must, what he must even be going through right now, and yeah, or the, even the mother, dude. Like I wonder. I guess she's going through questioning now and stuff like that, or because there's no charges yet. But yeah, she'll be arrested, and they'll. I'm sure they'll do some sort of an exam on her to see what's going on. Yeah, I just looking at that photo of the the, the car in the ocean. Doesn't that like hit you differently? It's just like it's, just, it's like, weird. so sad. It's bizarre. It's a very weird situation. Uh, all right. Well, this um, we have two more stories, and they're both kind of PSAs for residents in the state. Just things to be aware of as we, as a resident of New Jersey, I guess. And this first one is really interesting and kind of disheartening, if I'm honest. New Jersey residents are being warned about using public USB stations. What? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's so, something like you would never think about like having concern over. Listen to this. This is interesting. Are you heading to Newark Liberty airport, a hotel or motel, or perhaps a college or university in the garden state? New Jersey residents are being warned about charging cell phones, laptops, and other portable devices at any public charging stations with USB ports. Something being referred to as juice jacking um, the juice jackers are at it, dude. Yeah, it's, it's taking place at these ports. The Federal Communications Commission has issued an alert that scammers can now load malware onto public USB charging stations to maliciously access electronic devices while they're being charged. Um, that can be a serious problem because the corrupted USB port can export personal data like bank account numbers, passwords to the bad guys who may either use them themselves or sell them to crooks and scam artists. So like what I'm realizing is any area in our culture where a scammer can get their paws on your information they're going to. Yeah. And they're ready on it. <laughs> the FCC is warning that in some cases, criminals may have intentionally left cables plugged into charging stations and also that they, um, there have been even been reports of infected cables being given away as promotional gifts. Whoa. So never open up a USB cable. I mean, never use a USB cable that's been opened up already. I right? guess, yeah. And don't use USB ports, like whenever you see one in public. Yeah, I want to see what Newark Airport does about this because I've been to the airport a few times and you sit in a Do terminal. Do you use those? Sometimes. If I, need, if I need some juice, I'll plug my phone in, yeah. I always use my block because I'm always like, oh, oh. my block is going to give me more charging power faster than yeah. the actual USB ports. So like, I, I actually tend to stay away from those. And I didn't even think about the juice jackers. Um, <laughs> such a funny word. Um, I just always use my plug anyway. So good to know. Don't be using USB ports and they're everywhere, dude. Bring a block, bring a block. You got to think of a rhyme there. Bring a block. Stop the, <laughs> I don't know. Bring a block. Don't get jacked. I don't know. That's a hard one. Yeah. We'll figure something out for next week. 
So, so you use those often. No, I use the block. You're right. Now that I think about it, I definitely bring a block. Cause you could always also, if you have your laptop or something, plug in your laptop. And if there is no, like if there's only one outlet and you have to use your laptop, plug your phone into your laptop, use the USB port there and stay safe guys. Cause dude, these hackers are nuts. All right. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw you thinking when I was talking, I was like, he's got some cooking. Stop the hack. Bring a Jack. Oh. Now, I don't know what a jack is. I'm thinking like, like a... I, yeah, I'm thinking... Yeah, what is a jack? Oh, okay. We use... Instead of block, let's use brick. Okay. Stop the stick, bring a brick. That's not a stick. <laughs> stick. Stop the stick, bring a brick. <laughs> no, no, there's got to be something good. Hold on. We got to get to the bottom brick. of this. Brick. Brick. Uh, got to be slick. Bring a brick. Ha- hacker? No. <laughs> Hackers are slick. Bring a brick. <laughs> oh, wrong sound bite, but... <laughs> Hackers are slick. Bring a brick. I, I'm good, bro. That's put that on our shirt. I feel like we want to license that to the state of New Jersey. We have copywritten it, but we will. I've been watching Shark Tank. <laughs> I have told you this. For every billboard it's on, we want five cents. Okay, cool. Wait, that's not that many. That's not much money. You never know. How many billboards are they going to be put on? Like ten? I don't know. We'll that's have to work 50 out. Cents. Listen, we'll work out the royalty later. Yeah, you got to work on something because I like that idea. And so I did say there were a few PSAs we wanted to make in the close of this podcast. So that's the first one is if you're traveling publicly, don't use a USB port because these hackers are slick. Don't even think about it. If you see it, you're going to want to plug in that USB. Yeah. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Get the brick. Get the brick. These hackers are slick. Bring the brick. Pack a brick. Pack a brick, dude. Um, Yeah, it's absolutely insane. You can't trust anyone these days, man. This will be the only time moving a brick at the airport is completely legal. Ayo! That's crazy. Yeah, man. You guys want to, if you want to make some money. Because drugs. Because drugs. All right. So last story. um, This is something we're all, I think, for the most part aware of, but it's getting worse. I didn't know it's getting worse. Attention residents of New Jersey, many dangerous tick diseases are now spreading around the state. It's getting hot. Ticks are out. Ticks. Trying, trying to kill you, bro. Yeah, and there's some data I read in this article. Um, it says uh, Smith, who is someone speaking about Lyme's disease, she's an expert on the topic, said um, babesiosis. There's so many big words in this, dude. I yeah. didn't know if like you wanted to like. It's like a disease. It. No, it's. I guess it's it's affiliated with Lyme's disease. Is up 25 percent from 2011 to 2019. So from 2011 to 2019, these diseases affiliated with Lyme's from ticks are up 25 percent. That's, That's a huge, lot, huge, dude. So it is. Here's what the article says: It is well known that Lyme dis- Lyme disease is a serious problem in New Jersey. But as the weather turns warmer and more Garden State residents are spending time outdoors, there are several other types of tick-borne diseases that also pose serious health risks. According to tick expert Pat Smith, the president of the Lyme Disease Association in Jackson, it is important to always do a tick check after spending any time outside, which means carefully checking yourself, your kids, and even your dog. She said beyond Lyme's, there's a number of other tick diseases now impacting Garden State residents, including anaplasmosis. I'm glad I got that one. That was good. Right? Good job. That's also called yellow fever and uh, ehrlichosis from bacteria of the bite of the lone star tick. Smith said cases uh, of another tick disease, babesiosis, which is the one I was talking about before, are up 25% from 2011 to 2019. So it's not just, I misspoke a bit before. I'm kind of, it's not just lines. There's these other diseases that are popping up and are on the rise. So wow. guys, it's getting warm out in the garden state. If you're going to be out on some high grass, you're going for a hike in the woods, just check yourself. Just, just make it, you know, something that you work into your routine to check yourself for a tick. The last thing you want to get is limes or any of these other diseases. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Chickety check yourself. Remember that you time we yourself. went camping? We plucked that giant fatty off of you. Yeah. My back had a tick. You guys use it was my- a big one. It was wild. And then also PSA, you can't just like scrape a tick off your body. Most people, you should know that. Like, but like, don't you have to like take tweezers or like really pull them out? If you look online there, it'll tell you a few different ways. If you're going to use tweezers, you got to get it by its head. You can't get the body. Yes, that's it. Um, and then you can also burn them. You can also use Vaseline. I've, I've heard that's a good method. You put Vaseline over them and that'll suffocate them and they die. 
But while I, they're on your body, I would talk to it. Yeah. While they're on you, you put Vaseline wow. over or you pull their body off and put Vaseline over the wound in case the head is still there. I think, I, I don't know. I what, would look it up. What's crazy is like, if we didn't stop to check ourselves for ticks after that hike, yeah. that tick would have stayed on you, bro. And you could yeah. have been sick. Now we actually checked ourselves. Do we want to make another slogan up? Because we made a good one for the brick thing. Yeah. Well, you're really good at this. I'm bad at this, dude. Don't get sick. Check for ticks. Uh, I need uh, you need two like S's um, to make it work. That wasn't that hmm. smooth. Beat the tick. Beat the tick. Beat the tick. We should make a, a campaign called Beat the Tick. Beat the tick. Don't get sick. No, it doesn't work. Uh, sick sick beat- and tick. Sick and tick. How can you do that? Sick and tick. Huh. Tick and sick. Ticks are sick. Six are tick. What? Six or ticks. That's a good one. No, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Don't be a tick. <laughs> no, I don't know. Check for the brick. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I don't know. Well, listen, guys, just get it in your head uh, while you're outside. There's, if you go hiking, you're gonna you could get bit by a tick. So definitely check yourself afterwards. And, it takes, and your animals. It takes no time to check, and you have to think the threat of Lyme disease is you know, it's don't, horrible. And don't they like like hanging in warm places? So like, you know, armpits. armpits. You know, the article did literally say like your crotch area, like, crotch, like yeah. that. you want to check everywhere it's on your body. Terrifying. So yeah, just check yourself for ticks. The, uh, which, this is just a PSA to our Jersey residents. Um, the last thing you want is Lyme disease. And if Lyme disease goes unchecked, it gets worse and worse. Correct. Oh yeah. There's some people who I know deal with Lyme disease and it's just, it's, Not it's rough, man. It's really sad. And there's no solution for it. Right. I don't, I don't know. So something to be aware of as this warm weather comes around. You know, we got the ticks showing up. We got the spotted lantern flies everywhere, bro. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a regular on, old plague, you know? It's getting hot. Um, it's beautiful out. I think next week we go back to the 60s, but yeah, um, we're in the thick of it, Josh. It's almost MDW. Remember last year on the pod, you were just like, it's going to be Memorial Day weekend in no time. And now we're almost a year oh, later man. and it's happening again. MD. And you're going to be like, Christmas is right around the corner. MD dubs, baby. Well, life is slipping away before what's the, us. What's the official countdown right now, Josh, for MDW? Uh, how many countdown? I, I remember you started Three, the Instagram eight. countdown like a, like a month or, or so ago. So we should be. 45 days, no. baby. Are you serious? 45 days until MDW. It's going to be a good one this year. I could feel it in my <laughs> bones. Yeah. I just feel like this MDW. Hey. Cheers. It's going to be a good one. I have two weddings that weekend. Oh, yo, yeah, true. I and got one. the parade in Cranford, which I attend every single year. So you've got two weddings to go to and the parade. you got a busy weekend. It's going to be biz, busy, busy. And of course, after the parade, we're having a waffle brunch at my parents' house. My mom. And then you said. run to a wedding after. No, the wedding is oh, Saturday. Saturday true. Memorial Day is Monday. Oh, cool! Then you get to chill. It's a chill weekend. Sunday. <laughs> All right. Well, hey guys, that's our know, last story of the night. If you want to have a Memorial Day celebration with us, we're going to be all doing the Murph. On Memorial Day, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> You're actually doing it this year. You you've been wanting to do it for a while now. I wanted to, and then uh, well, we'll talk offline why I'm not doing the Murph this year. But you just said we're gonna do the Murph. <laughs> You I can't just, be spitting that out and then saying you're not going to do Sometimes I just it. like talking nonsense. It's kind of fun. I know. That's the best part about having a podcast. Yeah, it is. But that's why the people listen to us because we're trustworthy and we don't speak nonsense here. That's right. State. Hey, Josh, if people want to support our podcast, what's the best way they can do that? You know, they could buy some merch. Well, where can they buy merch? Thegardenstate.com. It's a wow. website. We yeah, have that URL. We have that URL. That's where all our merch is. We got these beautiful mugs out. Dude. Yes, yes. The mugs are great. I got the Diner Club shirt. You're rocking the classic staple. I don't think we're, I think we got like two of these shirts left in black, but we got those in pine green. They're beautiful. Uh, but just a heads up, uh, Memorial, like you said, MDW is coming up. Uh, we might have our biggest drop ever coming in a few months. So just Let's be on the lookout for some summer merch. Uh, it's about, we're about to level up. I need that sound effects. <laughs> Like We're a video game level, level up. And yeah, the merch coming Memorial Day weekend is going to be straight fwegs. Um, but yeah, you could support this show by getting merch. I heard there may... Oh, I'm not going to spoil anything. We'll just have to see what happens. We'll see but what just happens. be ready for Memorial Day weekend. We're going to have a little bit of a summer drop coming out. Oh, yeah. And you're going to want to support it. So with that... 
Yeah, we want to say goodbye to all oh, of you oh. and give a special shout out because we did the mailbag and our mailbag was asking for Danny Dimes to come back onto yeah. the pod. So Danny, come here. Actually. Danny, come on in here right now. Raf from Carney. I don't know if you know the young man, but he called into the pod asking for Danny Dimes. And look, Raf, it's a live Danny Dimes in the flesh. Josh, you stay there because you're in focus. Hi, Raf. Hey, Danny. Say question. Hi, Raf. Love you. Hey, Danny, question for you. How was your NJ Transit 113X trip back from New York, Port Authority, uh, to New Jersey today? Today was excellent. Zero traffic. I got here in record time. Not really, but it's it's up there with one of the greats. Really? Zero complaints. I knocked out real quick. What can I say? So would this sound bite be appropriate? New Jersey Transit is the absolute worst! Not today, but wow. I love the new board. First time I'm seeing it. Thank you, All brother. Right. Well, shout out to Danny Dimes. Thanks shout for coming on the Adam podcast. Shout out, shout out 201 Hudson County. Let's go, baby. Oh, 201 oh, Hudson. Man. Hey, Shoot. Out. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. In the coming months, I think Danny will be filling in for me an episode or two. I don't know what the details are yet, but I think they're going to get Danny on the pod because I'll have to miss some weeks. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah. But Danny Dimes is coming back on the podcast. The man knows his stuff. He knows the state. He loves his place and he knows his money, which is the most important part. And with that time, it is time to close the podcast. Now, thank you all for listening. We will be back again next Friday with our little Jimmy Parks. I hope. I hope he's not shopping around next week, too. Little Jimmy Parks. That's a little Jimmy Parks. Little Jimmy. You got to get him back on the pod. We miss Jimbo. I miss him uh, so much. We'll see him, and we'll see you next Friday. Thank you for listening. Adios. That's all we got. Yeah. See you guys later. Bye. I'm going to do the Jimmy. See you later. 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 Bye. You're listening to the Garden State. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Building castles in the sky. The dirty jurors.